The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, just before we begin, uh, I'd like to confirm if you can hear us or me. If you can just leave a message, that would be great. Yep, it sounds like everybody can hear you. OK, perfect. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to join us today. Uh, for those who may have to drop out midway, that's OK. Uh, we will have a webinar recording available. Uh, also, I'd like to thank Allison for taking the time out of her day to give us some insights on how to best attract leads uh, using Dynamics 365 and Click Dimensions. So if you have any questions during the webinar, uh, feel free to type them out and we'll get to them at the end of the session. And now I'll pass it on to Allison and she'll take it over from here. Awesome, perfect. Well, thank you for that introduction. Um, and for everyone that's on the call today that I have not had the pleasure to speak with, again, my name is Allison January, and I am one of our senior partner account managers uh, for Click Dimensions. So just want to start off by thanking everyone that's taken the time out of their day to listen into the presentation. I'm really excited to partner with CRM Dynamics on the webinar. Um, they are a gold partner for Click Dimensions and offer a ton of services and supporting their clients with our solution. So definitely one of my favorite uh, partners in the Dynamics channel to work with. So for our call today, we're going to be talking about something that is near and dear to my heart, which is how to attract leads and close sales with uh, Dynamics 365 and Click Dimensions. So in particular, how some sales and marketing folks can see the benefits behind utilizing things like web tracking, form submission, nurture marking, and I'm sure we've all heard and or discussed how they, there may be a separation between those two, uh, but here at Click Dimensions, we definitely see them working hand in hand. So just to kind of briefly go over uh, the agenda today, um, we're really going to be focusing on Dynamics 365 and marketing automation working together. So for those of you that are not familiar with Click Dimensions, I'm going to spend maybe the first three to five minutes giving a very high level introduction into our solution and who we are as an organization. Then I have a few slides um, for sales and marketing statistics that I wanna share with everyone to kick off the presentation. And then after that, we're going to jump into the live environment where we'll spend the majority of our time. So first and foremost, we're going to discuss how to create, send, and track personalized emails and why that's important. Then we'll jump over to nurture marketing and discuss why Nurture marketing is important at this point in 2018. And then from there, we'll go into how to use web analytics and lead scoring to better qualify prospects. And we'll close up the call with form submissions and how to create those automated processes. So what is Click Dimensions? Click Dimensions is a full marketing automation solution that you can use to perform end-to-end -end marketing tactics. So we give you all the functionality listed on this slide right inside the UI of Dynamics 365. So Click Dimensions allows you to measure the results of all of your campaigns and really helps to eliminate the redundant and manual processes, ultimately helping you to make better business decisions because you have better data. And what's great about this is you don't ever have to leave CRM to do things like creating your email campaigns, tracking your web visits, building web content like landing pages, forms, surveys, and you can do things like build multi-touch drip marketing campaigns. So a full-featured marketing automation platform for Dynamics 365. Now, this is the traditional marketing scenario that we hear quite often. Most of the companies that we consult with are telling us this story. They're using Dynamics 365 to manage their customer information and their marketing list. And then they're using something completely different for email marketing. And these two, two systems may have an overlap, but it's not a native integration between the email marketing platform and CRM. So you would have an issue in this instance with data syncing from one system to another, 
And maybe your list and CRM are not the same as the list in your email marketing provider. And then your source campaign and CRM is not the same campaign as in your email marketing service provider. So you have leads that don't match up. Um, and a lot of companies out there are even using multiple applications for other tasks. They may be using SurveyMonkey, they may be using other applications for web forms or even website analytics. And the problem is that you've got all of these applications and applications and nothing's really talking to one another. So it's something that marketers are trying to move away from today. And so what we do at Click Dimensions is we bring all of that data and all of the functionality into one centralized place that just flows directly into Dynamic three, Dynamics 365. Our application is actually built on Microsoft Windows Azure. And the way our solution works is we connect to the website with a tracking script. If you wanna track every page on your website, great. You can put that script on your global footer or you can be strategic about the page views and visit records you want to push into CRM and maybe put that script on very strategic pages. We have an email service. We send out those emails for our users, and we use Azure Send for that. And as the data comes back in from campaigns, your website analytics, your email statistics, like your opens, clicks, and all of that great data, instead of holding that up in another application, through a dedicated user, we use Dynamics 365 and just push that data back into your CRM environment. And so what that means for an organization who's investing in Dynamics 365 today is you can really ask that data to do whatever it is you want it to do. You're not in a situation where it lands in another database, where it's inaccessible. The power of querying your data, advanced finds, workflows, dashboards, you can really manipulate the data however you need. So with that being said, we're gonna talk about some sales trends. So why use marketing automation? So again, marketing automation is proven to be a vital part of the success of companies in nearly every industry and market. This is partially due to some interesting trends that both marketing and sales teams are having to adjust to. We're gonna spend a few minutes going over some of these trends, starting with sales. So first of all, what we're finding is Buyers are educating themselves and are nearly at the end of the buying cycle when reaching out to a salesperson um, or when a salesperson is actually reaching out to them. We're also finding out that a lot of the leads that marketing is generating, the individuals are not ready to purchase immediately. About 50% of qualified leads are not ready to buy. We're also seeing that sales cycles have increased by 22% over the last five years due to more decision makers being involved in the process. So people are having to deal with longer sales cycles as well as much more educated users in that area. Now, another interesting fact is that it's taking a lot more contacts or impressions, if you will, to get those individuals across the finish line. Sellingly actually shows 80% of sales are made between the fifth to 12th contact. So it's much higher than what it would have been, let's say five to 10 years ago. So this means more emails and more calls from the sales team. Research is also showing that 35 to 50% of sales are going to the vendor that responds first. So there's still that pressure on an organization to be quick and respond in a timely manner. And then also a lot of the B2B leads are almost 73% not sales ready. So it's not all on sales either. Marketers are also dealing with some difficult trends that may be a little disturbing to some of you on the call. Um, this is a big one. 79% of marketing leads never turn into sales. So that's a really high number, and hopefully some of you are seeing better numbers than that, but that's kind of an industry trend. Another thing that we're seeing is a lot of leads are not really appropriate to be sent over to sales. So 25% of leads should be passed to sales, although nearly two-thirds of marketers send all leads. This is another big one. Nearly 47% of B2B marketers admit that less than 4% of their leads turn into sales or they don't know the metric. So a lot of things are tying in together. So let's kind of summarize 
um, the sales findings. Buyers are more educated and want to educate themselves. Sales cycles are longer and require more touches. And the salesperson has pressure to make sure they engage at the right time. And so on the marketing side, few of the leads being generated are qualified and even less are ready to buy now. So marketing needs a way to further identify qualified leads and sales needs a more scalable way to manage the qualified leads. So let's look at some nurture marketing trends. Businesses that use marketing automation to nurture prospects experience over a 400% increase in more qualified leads. So that's obviously a huge increase there. I'm sure more of you on this call would like to see. I mean, just take a step back and think about that statistic for a moment. By using nurture marketing, the sales team is able to better understand their prospects, communicate in a timely manner, and ultimately close more deals. Another positive trend that we're seeing is companies that use automated lead management or nurture marketing increase revenue by 10% in less than nine months. Nurtured leads are also making 47% larger purchases. Now, this is a statistic that's been around for a little bit through Forrester that shows companies that are using nurture marketing are generating more sales-ready leads at a 33% lower cost. Now, another positive benefit from nurture marketing is that if you use personalized emails within your nurture, studies are showing you will significantly increase the click rate and conversion rate by more than 10%. Lead nurture emails also get four to 10 times the response rate than a regular email blast. All right, so with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into our environment um, that we have here at Click Dimensions. Um, and then I wanna show you around how you can utilize Click Dimensions with Dynamics 365 to power up your sales and to really create that closed loop between the sales and the marketing team. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull over, and let me just get rid of this, apologies there. Um, I'm gonna pull over one of our sandbox environments. Now for our conversation today, I may go back and forth between our sandbox that we have here and our production environment, um, just because our production environment has real life campaigns. And so we can take a look at some of the statistics, metrics and dashboards um, that we have in that environment. But essentially the first thing I want to do is really just point out exactly where Click Dimension sits within Dynamics 365. So when you log into CRM, you'll have access to Click Dimensions directly within the navigation here. Now it's important to note that Click Dimensions does go based around CRM security-based user roles. So you can establish who has access to what and what type of access they have. Um, but directly here in this alternate navigation, this is where we can access all of the Click Dimensions functionality. So you'll see we have CRM campaigns that are in here, as well as account contacts, leads, and marketing lists, um, because Click Dimensions does leverage all of those entities within Dynamics 365. And then you'll see all of the components for email marketing, so creating your templates, sending, managing subscriptions, on into the web content. So this is where we're able to go in, um, create any of our forms, surveys, landing pages, as well as create our automated responses. So our nurture marketing, which here at Clips Dimensions we refer to as campaign automation. You're also able to schedule out your social posts, manage your events. That's one thing that I did not mention, um, but just to point out, it's not something we're gonna spend a whole lot of time on today, um, but with Clips Dimensions, you do have the ability to connect to GoToWebinar, WebEx, Eventbrite, as well as Cvent. Um, so as you're creating events, it'll pass the data back over to Click Dimensions, and you can see who has registered for those events. And then we also have an integration for SMS, and that's between Twilio as well as Bulk SMS, all right? And then there's some more kind of admin things that you'll find over here um, on the other side within this navigation. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to start off on the email marketing side. Um, just because it ties in to a lot of the functionality that we do have here at Click Dimensions. Um, so I'm going to open up one of our templates that we have. 
Um, just so you can see the look and the feel and the ease of use and some of the components that you can add in when you are creating a template. And it looks like my internet may be having a little bit of a difficult time. Chanel, are you able to still see my screen? I can, uh, but I it hasn't changed yet. I think you clicked on emails and nothing else populated right after. Okay, so bear with me. I'm so sorry. It says the connection to Get you webinar has been lost. So bear with me two seconds and I will try to switch networks here. All right, so it says it's been reestablished. So let's try that again. There we go. Perfect. So um, again, we're going to start off on the email template side. Again, just so you can see the look and feel and some of the personalizations that you can add in since it is native to Dynamics 365. So this is just kind of a sample newsletter template. I'm sure a lot of you on the call, you're sending out um, new newsletter-based templates, but we're definitely going to take a look at a lot of examples throughout our conversation today. Um, but essentially, when you're creating a template through Click Dimensions, you'll give it a name, subject, and then you're able to specify your editor type. Now, with Click Dimensions, we do pride ourselves on ease of use, so you have the ability to use either our block editor or our drag and drop editor. Um, these are both geared towards individuals or marketers that maybe don't want to have to do a whole lot with HTML. You also have the ability to leverage our freestyle editor, which is more of like a WYSIWYG. So if you needed to go in and modify the HTML, you have the ability to do that. And then we also have a custom HTML editor. So this is more so if you're building anything out in like Dreamweaver or if you're working with a marketing agency and they're sending you over HTML, you can just copy and paste that directly into the editor and click dimensions will not modify it at all. Um, and so let's refresh that just one second. And apologies, for my internet seems to be still a little delayed there. I love that on the webinar, um, but here we go. So once you specify that information, we are able to go in and to build out the template itself. Now, this is our drag and drop editor again. So with that, we have a list of layouts that appear on this right hand side that we can choose from. And then we have additional content pieces that you can add into the template itself. Um, so as we're building this out, if we wanted to add in like a timid image and text block, we can just drag and drop that directly over into the builder. If we had any social links that we wanted to link within the template, we can just drag and drop that over as well. Now, by clicking on the block, we can modify the information that appears on the right-hand side. So one of the key components, and I'm going to talk about personalizations from a few perspectives, but one of the key components to having a solution that is native to your CRM environment is you are able to add in any information that you have on the individual lead contact account or owner record. Now, these entities will probably be renamed within your environment, um, but this is just what it is out of the box. So if I wanted to go in and grab in someone's first name, for example, all I have to do is hit add. And when I go to send this out, it'll dynamically pull in that individual's first name. Now you're also able to take that one step further and you're able to add in free marker. Um, so I think maybe a relevant example of um, adding an if then statement is we have an example out on our website that's language based. So let's say you're creating a monthly newsletter and you're creating it in English and in French. 
Um, so you're able to go in and specify if this individual, if their language preference is English, this information, if their language preference is French, show this information. Um, and so this check free marker will just make sure that those if then statements are set up correctly. Um, and then you're also able to go in and test the template before you send it. But that's just another way that you are able to add in personalization. Now, you're also able to link directly out to your website. So just if you're trying to drive traffic towards a particular page, pull your URL here. If you have any documents or PDFs that you would like to send out, you can just drag and drop those directly within this area. Um, you can organize everything out into a folder. So you would just select the template that you would, or sorry, the document that you would like to link within the template um, and then hit insert link. You're also able to add in your subscription management, um, which this is extremely important, especially for, um, you know, Castle and all of the double opt-ins that you have there. But essentially, uh, with Click Dimensions, instead of just having a global unsubscribe where they unsubscribe from receiving all communications, you are able to add in subscription management. So this will allow individuals to opt in and out of receiving certain content versus globally unsubscribing. You're also able to link in your web content. So again, you can create all of your forms, surveys, and landing pages through Click Dimensions. Um, and you can link those directly within the template. So if you had a form that maybe you wanted to link within the template, um, you could just type in a text. And then once you hit insert link, someone clicks on that link, they submit the form back, all of that data will track directly back to their individual record. Now you're also able to go into our image manager. Um, you, again, just like our document manager, you drag and drop images here and then you can organize everything out into a folder um, and then you can go in and select an image hit ok and it'll drop it directly within the template now again priding ourselves on ease of use we can go in and modify this image so if we needed to crop it resize it change the orientation we can do all of that directly within this area now as you're building out your template you can go in and do a preview um, and you can take that one step further and do an inbox preview, which would send your template out to different email clients. Um, and it would render back exactly what your template would look like as you're sending it out to individuals that may be viewing it on an iPhone or an iPad or the Gmail Outlook and so on. Now, once you create these templates, there's a few ways that you can send it out. Um, the main way that we're going to spend a lot of time talking about today is again, nurture marketing. Um, but before we take a look at nurture marketing, I did just want to show um, what it looks like to send out a mass communication so you're able to see the difference between the two. Um, so this newsletter that we were just looking at, the template, we've sent out a sample run on this. And essentially how you send out a template through Click Dimensions is you would come into this area, you would hit New. Um, you would then go in and pull in the template that you've created. You would, it would automatically pull in the subject line pre-header, and then you can associate it back to a CRM campaign. So again, this is really important uh, from a reporting perspective. So all of the Click Dimensions functionality, whether it's a nurture campaign, um, one-off emails, mass communications, form submissions, landing pages, all of our functionality ties back to that CRM campaign level, which is really going to help from that reporting perspective. You'll also then be able to specify who the email should come from, either record owner within CRM or a specific individual, and then when you would like this email to go out, so immediately or a specific date and time. And then here is where you would pull in the list of individuals that you would like to send this communication to. So again, with Click Dimensions, we leverage a lot of CRM's native functionality. So this is just a marketing list within CRM. You can send either static or dynamic list. And again, you can send to either leads, contacts, or accounts. And you can send to multiple marketing lists as needed. Now, once, you're, once you've specified this information, you can go ahead and send it out. And then you can start to view some reporting um, behind the template itself. Now, within the, while that's loading, within the email send here, um, oops. let's see. 
I'm going to click on this one. Um, while that's loading, um, we can go in and we can see all of the information directly within the navigation here. So if you wanted to see all the individual email events, sent emails, excluded events, um, visits, posted forms, surveys that were related to this, you can see all of that directly on this email send record, but you're also going to get some overall statistics or reporting that will come with Click Dimensions. So this first report that you see here is just kind of what you would expect your overview. So how many people did we send this to? What did their interaction rate look like? Their click rate, deliverability. Um, you'll also be able to pull in email clients. Um, so in this case, <laughs> it's pulling in the two um, just because it was a sample list. But if you were sending it out and the majority of your recipients were viewing it on Outlook, for example, it would pull in other clients as well. And then you're also able to see desktop versus mobile. So in this case, we can see about 73% of the recipients viewed it on a desktop, um, where about 27% viewed it on a mobile device. You're also able to see conversions. So if you did have a call to action, like putting in that form, you can see how many people did we send this to, how many individuals opened it, how many individuals clicked. Um, and then out of that, how many individuals went to our website, posted a form, or posted a survey in relation to this particular campaign. And again, it's tracking back to that CRM campaign level, so it's really going to help from that reporting perspective. You'll also be able to see a list of all of the recipients here. Um, so we can see if their deliveries, opens, clicks, or if there were any bounces. And then it's going to pull in a click heat map report. So it'll show you the percentage of the recipients that clicked on the individual links within this communication. Um, but one report that I like is called a click report. And so this shows you all of those individual links uh, that were or that are within the template. And it'll show you exactly how many unique clicks and total clicks the individual links received. So if I click on one of these, it will then pull in a report for me so I can see all of those individual leads, contacts, or accounts that actually clicked on that link within the communication. So if I wanted to, I could click on someone like Ian, and it's going to take me directly to Ian's record within Dynamics. And then I can view all of the information more so on that individual level. Um, so again, directly within the navigation here on Ian, I can see how many visits he's had, page views, if he's posted any forms, surveys, um, if he's clicked on any of my social posts, things of that nature. All right? And we'll spend some more time on that individual record, uh, but just to give you an idea of how all of that data does tie back. All right, um, so the next thing that we're going to take a look at, and this is where we're going to spend some time just kind of running through a few scenarios, is going to be with campaign automation. And for our conversation today, I'm going to create a new one um, just so we can run through a few examples. Um, but essentially here, what happens is you are going to just give it a name and then you can associate it over to a CRM campaign as needed. And then um, it again will tie back to that level as you start to send out some communications. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the builder and this is what it looks like. It's kind of like a blank canvas that you have here. And then you have all of your triggers or entry points that appear on this right hand side. Um, along with those, you have individual actions that you can add in as well as timers. And then if you have multiple actions, you can add in a series um, to tie those actions together. So I'm gonna run through a few examples, but again, if you guys would like to see more of a tailored um, demonstration or if you have any specific questions, just let us know. Um, but essentially, let's say that I had a list of individuals that I wanted to target or a list of prospects that maybe like went cold that, you know, I want to try to re-engage with. So I have my marketing list within CRM and then I can go in and I can add or I can send these individuals an email so we just kind of connect the dots there and by clicking on this icon this is where I can access the template that we've created and fill out um, you know who it should come from and things of that nature and so once we send an individual an email then we could go in and we could see what type of interaction did they have um, did they open the email did they click on a particular link we can determine what is positive and what is negative for us so maybe 
if they did open the email or if they did click on a particular link, we want to notify a user within Dynamics or a team. And then we want to go in and we want to create a task for this individual to follow up um, with that potential prospect. All right. And then maybe if they did not click on a link or open our email, we could go in and place a wait timer. And then we could say, all right, let's wait five days, four days, whatever our process is. And let's try to resend an email. And then you could go in and you could start to ask the same question. So did they actually register or did they actually open or click? And then you can send them down a certain path dependent upon that. Now that's kind of, and again, the sky is the limit, and that's the thing to kind of keep in mind as we're talking about this. Um, there's so much flexibility and different ways that you can kind of manipulate campaign automation for your process of, um, you know, how you would like to leverage the solution. So these are just a few examples that I hear quite often um, as I work with organizations. Another example, and this is kind of one that we use here at Click Dimensions, is through form submission. So we work in, you know, about a little over 60 different countries, and we have different teams that manage different territories. And so when someone comes to our website, you know, we'll ask them where they're located when they submit in that contact us or um, ask for a demonstration request. And so we want to make sure that we are looping in the right individual on our team based around where they're located. Um, and so what happens is I would click on this icon and I would pull in my contact us form. And so I have my contact us form associated to it now. And then just generically here, we could say, if they say they're located in the US, I'll go down that path. Um, they say they're located in Canada, they'll go down that path. And then if they say they're located in the UK, we'll send them down that path. And the way that we're able to do that is through this decision node that you see here. So once I click on this decision node, then I can go in and I can add in a clause that essentially says if they say they're located in the United States, send them down this path. If they say they're located in Canada, that path, in the UK, that path. And then once I do that, I can go into each of these series and I can add in actions and timers. So send an email. Thank you for submitting in your contact us. Someone will reach out to you shortly. Um, and then I could go in and I could notify the team that manages that specific territory. And then I could create an activity or a task for them, again, within CRM to follow up with that individual, to give them a call, to um, you know, send them an additional communication, whatever the case may be. And then you can continue to branch that out as needed. Now you can do that with forms. You can also do it with surveys. So you can fully automate the responses that you're sending individuals or the paths that they're going down based around information that you already have on them in CRM or information that they're specifying. Um, so, so through survey submission, if they, maybe you have a customer satisfaction survey that's going out and if they give you below a certain like rating like one to ten and maybe they give you below five you can have a certain individual on the team notified but maybe if they give you a ten you have someone else notified um to send those to send kudos that way um you can also do it for event registration so again as i mentioned we have the go to webinar webex event right as well as event integrations there um so if you had let's just say here a marketing list of individuals that you wanted to target uh, to invite to an upcoming webinar like we're hosting today. We could send out that invite and then we could go in and we could start to ask questions. Um, did they register for the webinar? And if they did register for the webinar, then maybe we're just sending them an email saying thanks for registering. Here's the link for registration. And then we're going to put a date timer on it. So a day before or the day of the webinar, we could go in and send a reminder. Um, so we would just send another email and then we could go in and we could say, did they actually attend the webinar? And if they attended or if they didn't attend, we could start to branch that out. So if the individual did not register, we could put a wait timer and then we could try to resend the invite. 
and just kind of connect the dots this way. So you can see how nurture marketing campaign automation, as we refer to it, really does help to automate processes that you run internally today. So not only does it save time on the marketing team, um, but it's also making sure that individuals receive the correct information in a timely manner, and it's all personalized, again, based around information that you already have on this individual within your CRM environment. All right. Now, obviously, I just kind of mocked this one up. Um, but just to point out, if I did save it and I ran it, you would be able to pull in your participants and then it would pull in statistics, kind of similar to what we were just looking at for your mass communication. All right. So to tie this together and to show you how this data is tracking back into dynamics, um, we're going to take a look really quick at form submission. So we're going to take a look at some posted forms that we have within the environment here. So earlier today, I just went to our kind of dummy website that we have here. You can tell that our CRM guy is in love with his bike. Um, he based our entire website around it. But essentially, we have posted a Click Dimensions form directly onto the site, that contact us form, so it's just asking for some information. Um, and then all I have to do, and you can also add in CAPTCHA components to this, but all I have to do is hit this contact us. Um, and then what it's going to do is it's going to send me through an automation. It's going to send me the autoresponder. It's going to send a notification out to our team. Um, and then I should be hearing from someone shortly, right? But if I go back into our CRM environment, now this can take anywhere from like 60 to 90 seconds. So I'm gonna refresh our screen here. But you can see that form, the contact us, um, is linked directly back to my record, my contact record within Dynamics. It's associated back to this campaign and it's associated back to this form capture. Um, so with Click Dimensions, you can create forms through our solution. Um, and then you can also link in forms that maybe you've already created through like your website provider or something of that nature. So if you have forms that uh, you leverage today through your website provider, instead of recreating the wheel, you can link those up to Click Dimensions or if you're using like Gravity Forms, something of that nature, you have that option. Now, if I open this up, we'll be able to see um, it is linked, again, directly to my record, and then it's going to pull in all of those posted form fields that I submitted on the form itself. Um, and then it's also going to track back to visit your website, Click Dimensions is going to track that in. And the way that that actually works is if we scroll over here. Um, every time someone visits your website, just to give you a little bit of insight, we do an IT organization lookup. We track in all of those individuals as an anonymous visitor until they identify themselves by either clicking on a link, posting a form, um, opting in for a subscription, just kind of raising their hand. And then once they do that, we deactivate that anonymous visitor record, and then we track all of the data back to their individual um, lead or contact record. And so here you can just see an active view of all of the individuals that have recently visited the website. Um, so you can see here that there are some anonymous visitors, and then we've identified individuals like Nicole, Patrick, and myself. Um, and so with each of these, you'll be able to see total pages, the score, and duration. And then you're able to query against this data, um, which we have a query for social sites or for search engines. But you can query against this data and slice and dice it however needed um, for your own process internally. So if you wanted to see everyone that's visiting your site from like an AdWord campaign or um, from LinkedIn or from Facebook or something of that nature, you're able to slice and dice this just as you would normal CRM data through advanced find. All right. Um, so with that being said, those are the key points that I really wanted to focus in on for our conversation today. Um, one other point that I did want to kind of loop into this because I feel like it does tie in nicely, um, but I did not mention it at the beginning of our agenda, uh, is social posts. So just to kind of give you guys a little bit of insight, you are able to create different social posts that you would like to go out. 
And I feel like this ties in nicely with campaign automation. So if you had um, like an event, like that webinar example, and you wanted to schedule a social post to go out to either Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus, Twitter, or even Instagram, you can schedule a social post to go out in correlation with when you are running a campaign automation. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like, we give it a name and then you can associate it back to that campaign. Um, but we would be able to go in and you can specify different profiles um, that you would like to be able to share this content out on. Um, you would be able to type in your message here you can also add in an image, so a local file, or you could choose something from like Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, and so on. And then once you create your social post itself, you can schedule that post to go out now, or again, you can select a specific date and time for that post to go out. Now, once you schedule it to go out as individuals interact with it, again, Click Dimensions will track that in as a social interaction, and it essentially tracks back in as a visit and as a page view and ties back to that individual record um, within Dynamics. All right. Um, so wanted to point that out just to kind of close that loop there. Um, but for the remainder of our time today, I do want to open it up to see if there are any questions or if I can provide any additional information um, around the dimensions. And well, so I did have a question slide, but it looks like I just put it on the incorrect slide there. Um, but we'll go ahead and open it up to see if anyone does have any questions or if I can provide any additional information. But hopefully today um, it gave you a glimpse into how you can leverage Dynamics 365 as well as Click Dimensions to help close the loop between sales and marketing and how to nurture some of those prospects and tie the data back to that individual level. Just want to confirm um, there are no questions coming through, correct? Because I don't see it on my end. Yeah. So. Okay. I do not see any yet. Okay. <laughs> that is correct. Guess that was really, really informative and well explained. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank okay. you for that and thanks for setting this up. It looks like we still have a few individuals on, but we can stay on for a few moments to see if there are any questions. And again, if you have specific use cases or requirements from the marketing perspective and you want to set up more of a tailored presentation, um, feel free to reach out to Shanella and the team there to get something on the calendar and scheduled to review through that. Sure. Thanks, Allison. And thank you again, everyone, for really taking the time out. And I hope uh, the session gave you a good insight. Um, again, like Allison said, if you have any questions, concerns, uh, you can definitely reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to schedule if, um, a webinar if you need more information or um, just chat about Click Dimensions and Dynamics 365. Uh, thanks again, Allison. Um, it was really great and informative. Oh, yeah, no problem. And it looks like we did have one question that came through um, wanting to know a bit more about translation capabilities. Um, so with Click Dimensions, our solution, since it does fit natively within Dynamics 365, we support all languages that are supported by Microsoft. Let me know if that does answer your question. So. Um, Again, like if you needed to see things in English or French or Spanish or something of that nature, um, we do support all of those languages, even Chinese characters. Perfect. Um, there is another question that came through that is asking about capabilities that are linked to GDPR in Europe. Um, that's actually a great question and it's something that our team has spent a ton of time um, 
on in the recent months. It's probably been around a year that that's been in development um, with our team. And we actually have a white paper out on the Click Dimensions website um, that I would recommend checking out. And I can show you guys where that is. We have a ton of great information out on the Click Dimensions site. So under our resource section here, um, let me see, unless marketing has moved it, but it looks like I actually may need to send that to Chanel, if you wouldn't mind sending that out. I'm going to check one more place. Um, so we have some documents here, but we also have a white paper um, that I can send out. But on the Click Dimensions blog that we have here, um, these are kind of some frequently asked questions around GDPR and who it applies to, um, what's the deadline for compliance, and kind of what our recommendations and what we have done um, on the Click Dimensions side to help out with that. Um, so I will get that white paper and I will have um, Chanel send it over to you. Sure, no problem, and Allison. One other question um, around documents and images that are added to emails. Um, so those are actually stored within Azure. So with Click Dimensions, we store all of your images, your documents, email templates, um, the forms, landing pages and surveys. So any of that web content along with the images and documents, those are all stored within the Click Dimensions application in Azure. Um, the, rec the rest of the data, as far as the statistics, like your opens, your clicks, your unsubscribe records, those are all going to be stored within your CRM environment. And just depending on the level of emails that you're sending out, the storage capacity does vary. Um, so if you have any questions around that, I'd be more than happy to think offline to get you those exact numbers there. Perfect. Great question. All right, so it doesn't look like we've had any other questions come through at the moment. Um, oh, here's one more. What about emails and spam listing? Um, I think maybe, and if not, um, I might need you to clarify a little bit, or again, we can connect offline. Um, but I believe you're referring to um, making sure that your emails that you're sending out are not getting caught in spam filters. So with Click Dimensions, when you're creating your email templates, um, you do have the ability to run that inbox preview. And a part of that inbox preview is it will, and I can show you what this looks like in our production environment that we have here. Um, but when you're creating email templates, it will um, give you the ability to run that spam test to make sure that your template is not going to get caught in a spam filter dependent upon the email client. Um, so this is what the inbox preview looks like. So it just gives you an idea of your template, but it also gives you that spam filter. So in this case, it looks like our template has passed, um, but this is really important. So if you're using like HTML, it would pull in your spam score for that. Um, if you had too many images, subject line, um, kind of verbiage within the template itself, it would pull in your spam score um, for each of the individual email clients. Does that answer your question? And then a part of this is you'll also be able to see once you're sending out the email itself, um, if it was caught in a spam filter for a specific individual. 
All right. And that'll also pull in your bounces. So it'll pull in your soft bounces as well as your hard bounces. And again, soft bounces are more of like your out of office, um, uh, hard, or like inbox is full, something of that nature. A hard bounce is going to be more like the email address is invalid. All right, so it'll pull in those three components for you. And there was a question about click dimensions um, with working with more of like government organizations or charities that are not actually selling things, but need to send out marketing info to their mailing list. And yes, absolutely. Um, we work with a ton of nonprofits. Um, some of the names that I can give out that we do not have an NDA with, and they're okay, as we work with some of the United Ways, um, as well as you know, we've worked with um, like Doctors Without Borders, we've worked with um, federal agencies here in the States. Um, so we definitely do work with organizations that are not your typical B2B, B2C um, type of marketer, but that are still sending out communications, um, whether it's newsletters or they're trying to get membership renewals or something of that nature. Um, and we do have, if I can also send this over, um, but we do have an industry spotlight, and we have one for press professional associations as well as for nonprofits, and I think we also have one for government agencies, um, but it's giving examples of how um, organizations have leveraged click dimensions. Um, so this is a nurture example for members, and then there's a few other examples for email templates, landing pages, forms, surveys, and opting in for subscriptions. Um, so if you're interested in receiving that, we can get Chanel to send it over to you as well. Um, there was also another question that came through is what new functionality can we expect to be released soon? So they're actually updating that onto our website as we speak. Um, so you should be able to see that soon at clickdimensions.com backslash new release. Um, it'll show you what's coming out in the one to three month range, then three to six, and then six to 12. Um, so for everyone's information, we are on a monthly release schedule. So every month um, there's something new that's coming out with Click Dimensions, whether it's just making updates, modifications to current features and functionality, or if there are new components to Click Dimensions that will be added within the solution. Um, that's being updated, but there are a lot of things just kind of generically high level here. Uh, without committing to too much, what they are focusing in on right now is updating a lot of components around lead scoring to give more flexibility around that when you're doing things like nurture marketing or doing more like account-based scoring. Um, and then they're also working on progressive profiling to add that in. Um, but you should see uh, we have a new email editor that's in the works, so I'm not sure if you guys saw that, but it's currently in beta. Um, so we just have a few customers and partners that are currently leveraging it. Um, so we have the email editor, you'll see some things with lead scoring, and then you'll see some updates and enhancements to our form editor. Um, but again, that should be out on the website within the next few weeks here. And then we have a question around C names. So with click dimensions, and there is a, let's go back to the click dimensions website here. And I'm gonna make sure that I can find this for you. Um, but under the click dimensions help site here, we have a ton of help and how to articles that you can access. Um, and so one of the articles that is out here on our knowledge base is related to C names. Um, and essentially you'll set up your C names as part of the initial deployment for Click Dimension. So here's an introduction to C names. It'll also give you an overview on how to get those set up. 
Um, but setting up your C name and your SPF record, those are extremely important. Um, it's how things track back to your organization. So you'll set up your C name so everything will track back to your organization and it's not going to look like the communications are coming from Click Dimensions. A part of setting up your C names is you'll also set up your SPF records. Um, so your SPF records, they're just going to help with deliverability and to also help make sure that you're not getting caught in those spam filters. All right. There's a little video tutorial right here that gives an overview on CNAME. So definitely recommend checking that out and reviewing through this article. And then if you have any questions, more than happy um, to set up an additional call to discuss that. And then there's also a question that just came through based around pricing. So with Click Dimensions, our pricing is based around email volume on an annual basis. A lot of marketing automation solutions base it on contacts, but since CRM is our database, and you may have contacts in CRM that are not necessarily individuals that you'll be sending communications to, we do base it on annual email volume. Um, we have out on our site pricing. Um, let's go back to just the Click Dimensions website here. And then I can also provide additional pricing, but just know that it's the majority of it is based around that annual email volume. There's two different packages that you can choose from between the basic and the business. The basic includes 50,000 emails for the year and the business includes 200,000 and then we add emails on top of that. Um, but essentially the basic is limited functionality so it's not going to include campaign automation, SMS, landing pages, surveys, or the event integration. Um, so there will be that limitation but the business um, package does include all the functionality that we have discussed today. All right, no problem. Thanks for joining in. Glad you found the session informative. Um, but again, my I'm more than happy to set up calls to review through any of this information that I've discussed at a high level more in depth. So um, if you do want to continue the conversation around C names, pricing, the GDPR, more than happy to continue that conversation um, offline as needed. And I do not see any additional questions that have came through, um, but more than happy to stay on for a few moments here to see if any other questions do come through. Um, but thank you all for joining again. Glad you found the webinar informative. Yep, thank you. All right, well, thank you, um, Chanel, for setting this up. And I will send you over the GDPR document and the industry spotlight, um, but we can connect after. So thanks for setting this up. And again, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thanks, Allison. Thank you, everyone.